<laughs> didn't you? St didn't, isn't your background in comedy? Uh, sort of. It's it's uh, a little complicated. Only that I moved to L.A. to be a comedy writer. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was, um, are you guys L.A. people? Any of you? No. OK, no. so what happens is you move to L.A. to be a comedy writer and then you just like don't write ever, but you still tell people you're a writer. Mm. Oh. And that happens for like the first look, if you're really motivated, you could do that without um, moving to L.A. I'm a yeah, writer. Exactly. <laughs> but basically, you know, it's not even it's not even that you're lying, right? You just like think of yourself as a writer and you don't realize that like, well, you haven't actually even written, written anything. So you're not. So um, once I came to that realization, I ended up just getting a job. I was working on a show called Mad TV. Oh, as a, uh, cool. yeah. As a, but in production. So I was like, you know, in comedy. But I wasn't really having to do with the comedy part of the show, but I worked there for a couple of years and then I got a internship at the World Series of Poker as a, like a like a tournament reporter, like a blogger. I would like watch a big hand happen and run over to a computer and, and type it up for the Internet. And I did those all very funny. And that was like my thing. I was like the funny update guy. And um, so they thought that I was like actually somewhat successful as a comedy writer in L.A., even though I never said anything and um then i got just sort of accepted into poker as like the funny guy in poker because no one was doing funny poker content so i went from reporter to video producer to podcast host to video host to tv host um from about like 2005 to 2009 and it just so happened that there was a oh. vacuum it was just like a, no one was trying to be funny in poker and so all of a sudden i just happened to be there when there was like this vacuum for it and uh, i got really lucky and ended up on TV, even though I wasn't trying. Mm -hmm. what was well, that's not luck. You saw a vacuum and you filled it. Yeah, that's smart. You, you said yeah, I don't you know were... if I was conscious, though. Like, I think a lot of pe times people, like, want to attribute their own decisions too much to their success stories. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I didn't make any wrong decisions to get me here. Mm -hmm. But, like, everything was pretty laid out. Like, I never, I could never, like, take credit for, like, what a genius I was to end up here. I don't know. There's something to be said for taking advantage of the opportunities in front of you, too. Like, even if you didn't make them happen, there are a lot of people who pass them up. Yeah, and people who are self-sabotaging, too. I've seen that, like, to to a degree. Like, I've seen it in movies, and I've been like, people don't, people don't do that. People don't go out and drink and do drugs on the most important, the day before the most important meeting of their lives. Nobody does that. And then I've seen people do it. I'm like, holy shit, people do. <laughs> oh, my God, that's real. Yeah. You said you were in production on uh, Mad TV. What, what, what were you actually doing? What was your title? Uh, I was the production assistant for my first year. Mm -hmm. Then my second year, I was made, uh, I called it co-head of the research department, but there were only two people in the research department. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was my job to provide video research to, like, the set dressers and, like, Keegan-Michael Key would come in and I would give him tape of, uh, you know, whatever guy he wanted to do an impression of that week. And then if we were doing a Raymond sketch, I'd have to hand out everybody loves Raymond tapes to the whole cast. <laughs> that was super fun. I mean, we just watch TV. Yeah, uh, all day, every day. Paul, Paul Timberman's workshop was my is my all time favorite uh, bit on that show. I oh, Will Sasso, that. yeah, very funny. I missed Will. I was there for season seven through fourteen. Ah, okay. uh, sorry, eight through fourteen. And uh, Will, his last season was season seven. I just missed him, but every interaction I ever had with that guy was hilarious. And he's just such a warm, <laughs> fun dude. You just really want, funny you guy. Feel like your best friends, and then he walks out, and you're like, oh, I don't even really know him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he doesn't even really know me. But some yeah. people have that skill in making you feel like you're their best friend while you're talking. Yeah, to people no, who are good at so, sales are good at that. Yeah. Uh, Keegan's like that. Ike Barinholtz is like that. Uh, they're they're all just a lot of what I've um, adapted myself during fan interactions and interactions with crew and stuff like that is stuff I've modeled off of Keegan and Ike because they are such gracious people when I work with them at Mad TV. Like. To this day, I ran in. I saw Keegan on a red carpet, and he jumped the rail to come over and give me a hug and ask me how my family was. That's the kind of guy that Keegan is. And I, I haven't run into him yet, but he's exactly the same. So I appreciate that. Because anyway, uh, I'm a production coordinator for a couple of years. So I was desperate to get into the writers' room. Was largely ignored. Largely didn't. Um, also, didn't really uh, self promote very well. Mm. That's one regret I have is not uh, being more of like a annoying self-serving douche. Yeah.
but then hey poker came along that's good see it all worked out you didn't even have to be an annoying self-serving douche i assume i mean i'm on like channel 871 at 2 30 in the morning <laughs> <laughs> when, when the on any channels at any time so true, <laughs> true. True. You're, you're beating all of us there yeah yeah, we're on a YouTube channel. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, a different iTunes account. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, do you have any other examples? Like so you mentioned Keegan, right? And how like you, you, yeah. you see an aspect of him and you're like, okay, now I'm going to model myself and, and incorporate that aspect of him into me. Got any more? Um, let's see. Keegan and Ike for sure. Um, does it have to be someone I know personally? Because I really oh. sort of like on Twitter, I was just having so much fun on Twitter today, guys. I was I was doing one of my <laughs> classic Twitter pranks where I pretend not to know something and I watch people's heads explode. So today I was pretending that I thought the two cards you get in, in Texas Hold'em are your hold cards. <laughs> now I've been doing this job for over a decade. So I was like, it's hold cards, right? Like all of a sudden during broadcasting, I'm like, it's definitely hold cards, right? And people are genuinely don't understand. I'm joking. So they'll send me like Wikipedia entries and photocopies from books, whole cards, whole cards, whole cards. And so I'm like, this is doctored. This is clearly a Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> I was having such a fuck. And then some of, some of the fans catch on. Right. So then they give me corroborating evidence. Quotes, you know, like, See exactly. Um, so I was having a blast on Twitter today. But one thing I've picked up from folks like Patton Oswald and um, Sarah Silverman are two different things. One is that Patton will typically take a mean comment and make an even better joke out of it. So someone recently was being critical of a company hiring me to do a pot limit Omaha stream, mm -hmm. which I am not at all an expert in. I don't know much about it all. You get four cards instead of two. So my reply to that guy was, look, I've been doing Hold'em commentary for over a decade. I think I can handle a game with one more card. <laughs> 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 that is the kind of thing like Patton is really good at that kind of like oh wait we lost your audio for a second did you guys also lose it mm -hmm. I lost for a sec uh, can I you back? say something Drew you're back sure yeah. okay so that's why like a guy like Patton will take a, a will show the absurdity of someone being that rude on the internet but also make a better joke out of it and then Sarah Silverman does this thing where when someone's mean to her she's just like Hey, it really feels like you're hurting right now. Like, honestly, not messing around. If you want to talk about it, let's talk. And I've done that multiple times to trolls. And I have also, I typically offer them free comedy tickets, free comedy. If you ever want, look, I don't tour, right? I'm not like a big touring mm -hmm. comedian. I'll hit maybe like four or five cities throughout the course of the year. If I'm, if I'm ever in your town, just hit me up. I'll give you tickets, drinks on me. And I hope, you know, it look, it look, it's a little like, it's a little passive aggressive. I'm not going to lie. Like mm -hmm. there's a little bit of me trying to have the moral high ground there, but it still does some good. And I, it's worked. It's worked. Yeah. People have been like, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't really mean that. You seem like a good guy. Uh, yeah. I'll take you up on it sometime. So th those are a couple of other things I've sort of emulated. I try to, I try to like, just see things that I admire in people and just start to do them, you know? And a lot of the time it's not difficult, especially when it comes to kindness. Like, Kindness is is free. Yes, that's God something I think about every day. Because I don't take that track at all. If someone's mean to me, I usually don't give them any attention. Right? That's that's. What I, think. I, I think that's perfectly valid too. Mine is that I, I think I like yours more though. <laughs> because, well, because mine is still I'm still interacting with them and I'm still winning in a way. Like I'm not above it. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking a totally cheap shot approach to fixing it. Like rising above it is really difficult. So. The way that I do it with my silence is I don't think of myself as rising above it. I think that silence is just a different kind of response, right? You know, like this guy wants my attention. I am denying him that. I'm still being an asshole, right? I'm not rising above it, but I just hope it looks like that. No, I like it's your, little, your little troll comments because I'm, I'm on your Twitter right now. Like I said, I don't know fuck all about poker, mm -hmm. but this it's so obvious that you're trolling. that You, you said that, you know that whole thing. And this guy's sending you screenshots <laughs> of a book by Daniel Negranu. And you just said, I have a cousin named Keith who is very good at MS Paint and could easily whip something up like this in a matter of days, not buying it. And people are like, days. you fucking idiot. And it's like, <laughs> uh, I, I love yeah. people who act like every day is their first day on Twitter. Oh, no, no. <laughs> people so yeah, they're eating the young right. People, re it's like, you know, it's, I don't even think it's cancel culture. It's correction culture. Like everyone just wants to be able to tell you you did something wrong. 
Um, mm. And look, I, I do think like a lot of wrongs are being righted now by people having voices that they didn't have before. But man, we gotta let some stuff slide. We just gotta let we just gotta let like a little bit. Slide, yeah. Guys. Well, like, what was can't... the thing? Uh, like the internet rule where it's like if you want the answer to something, don't ask. Give the wrong information. Mm. Oh my god. And then yes, you'll get it where absolutely. you're like, no, it's a well known fact. Hitler killed himself in 1938 before the beginning of the war. Actually, page. here's the bunker that he killed himself in. It's like there now. I know. Now this I know is where four it different happened. sources. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah, a roundabout way of thing. ask the audience and who wants to be a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, Trump actually can serve four terms. If you do you see that? There were some trolls like a few weeks ago that got like tons of traction oh, yeah. from people who bought into it, where someone <laughs> said, like, you know. If Trump is impeached uh, in this term, he can run again next term, and that will count as his first term. So he can <laughs> run again. And be, there were so many people being like, no, 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 like, like tweeting pictures of the Constitution. The guy's like, that's not true. You know like, what is true? Not... <laughs> if I know it's not happening, but just work with me. If Trump were removed from office this term, he could win re-election and serve the following term. Yeah. I think that is true, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was, saying that he could win again and then win again. <laughs> <term>. <laughs> this was a tactical impeachment. I, you I do, another do you think his odds would be better or worse if he were <laughs> impeached and he had that to run on? Like, 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 they thought they could throw me out? Let's show them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I have no predictions anymore for anything that happened in this one. I don't know, Kyle, but I could, make it, yeah. I could see both sides. I want to watch that you movie. Know. That's all I know. Yeah. I hope it doesn't happen in real life. 